drop, folks. On the plank, on the plank of black people. We know that without chattel slavery, this regime would not have gotten strong enough to be able to go and expand this regime into our home countries. We know that without the exploitation of black bodies, today our people would not be kicked out of our home countries and we criminalized here in the United States. So we raise our voices for the voiceless, the nameless, and those who can no longer speak for themselves because this regime, this imperialist regime has taken their lives way too early. That's right. So today, as we raise our voices, well, let's lift our fists to and say, I'm proud to the people.
Instagram Plaza. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. We're out here reclaiming Martin Luther King Day Jr. Day. What a beautiful day here in Oakland, 60, 65 degrees. Got a good crowd getting ready to take off on a march here. They would have taken the uh, side of the, the truck down. And we're gonna jump into it. So Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy has informed a wide range of struggles for liberation and dignity in the U.S. as well as internationally. Third World Resistance formed last year in 2015 around Martin Luther King Jr. Day to lift up and highlight the militancy and internationalism that was the hallmark of the last days of Dr. King's life. For that reason, we again join movements for liberation and self-determination here in the U.S. and across the world in celebrating MLK Day to continue to build black power and resistance. We rally and march today to draw attention to the ongoing war on black people and the repression of people's struggles for self-determination in the U.S. and around the world. So in our spirit, we will be reading essays from different statements of solidarity from around the world with the movement represented right here and movements represented by these beautiful flags right behind us. The first one is from the Alliance of South Asians Taking Action, also known as ASAKA. They stand in solidarity with the struggle for black liberation. We recognize that our history of resistance to British imperialism in the subcontinent and our fight against Islamophobia are here in the U.S. and are intrinsically linked with the history of black resistance. And from Bayan, the Filipino liberation movement, Bayan's commitment as a mass movement is to uphold and dedicate its work in memory of thousands of Filipino martyrs who laid down their lives so that our country may one day live in freedom, democracy, peace, and justice. This one is from Gabriella. Filipino working women, the working women of the United States and the black people and women have one objective, one interest and one struggle. 
to the struggle of the black people connect to the struggle of the working people around the world. And from Haiti and the Haiti action committee, just as we in the Bay Area are fighting against the police murder of black people, so it is in Haiti. Haitians are now in the street almost every single day. The mass movement is telling the U.S. and the United Nations occupiers don't steal our vote and demanding reclaim Haitian sovereignty from foreign occupation. And this is from the National Alliance of Organizations, State, and Municipal for Social Justice. Brothers in Solidarity of the American Union received greetings from more than 80,000 day laborers from the Valley of San Quentin and Baja, California, and the millions of agricultural workers from Mexico that, led Martin Luther King Jr., stood up to combat racism, discrimination, segregation, and many other adjectives that have harmed human beings. And from Viet Unity, Dr. King's leadership in opposing the war on Vietnam was the turning point in the anti-war movement. While the war then in Vietnam was decades ago, new wars around the world are being fought by the same imperialist and colonist powers, especially against our African brothers and sisters in this country. And this is from the Arab Resource and Organizing Center. We know that the liberation of Arab people from here to our homelands is inextricably linked with black liberation. We know that anti-blackness is manifested in Zionism, imperialism, and colonialism. And we know that we have the duty to continue to build across all of our struggles. And from also being an organization that supports Palestinian countries in Palestine, the lynching of Emmett Till, a 14-year-old child in Mississippi in 1955, draws disturbing parallels with the burning alive of 16-year-old Palestinian Muhammad Abu Qaid from Jerusalem in 2014. The words of MLK resonate well for Palestinians. These calls are the call of Palestinians continue to voice. Today, Palestinians continue to call for the right, for their rights, the right of return, of national rights and self-determination. And this is a statement from a prisoner in San Francisco. My name is Jeff Walker, senior of San Jose, a diverse city. Continue the legacy of internationalism. Don't forget that people are also fighting back behind the walls of prisons and jails. Yay. And another statement from inside the cages of the U.S., a statement from Hassar Hamilton Ahmed in prison at California State Prison in Lancaster. The prison struggle relates to Dr. King's legacy because at the end of Dr. King's life, he realized, like many prisoners in the struggle today, that the process of liberation is one wherein the oppressed begin to clearly distinguish their perception, their logic, and thought process from the oppressors and the colonizers. These statements reflect the spirit of joint struggle to imperialism, to racism, policing, and state violence. From the streets of Oakland to inside prison cells to people defending their homeland all over the world. Even as the U.S. state attempts to tamp down the rising fist of black dissent in cities across the country, people's movements in Haiti, Palestine, the Philippines, and across the globe are only intensifying and strengthening their solidarity with black struggles in the U.S. Our struggles and resistance have long been connected. The West was built and structured in this world on black death, while systematically waging attacks on third world people in their struggles for self-determination. So why do we stand here today? We stand today in honor of Dr. King, in honor of Malcolm X, in honor of the Black Panthers, in honor of Brown Parade, in honor of the Red Guard, of the Blind War Front, the American Indian Movement, all who took on state sanctioned attacks on our community directly, elevating the struggle against state violence for an end to the capitalist system that deploys policing, militarized repression against all our people.